Good evening, YouTubers. Welcome to episode 24 of SugarTube TV. Uh, it's Christmas Eve, so happy Christmas to you all and uh, all the best for 2024. I hope you enjoy your, uh, your racing and get out there if you've been planning to get out there, like me. Right, I'm not going to go on about what's in tonight's uh, episode because uh, I'll list it all in the title. Got lots of different things going on. I'm on with building something now, which is very exciting for me because it's my little 1120 engine. And um, I just thought I'd do a bit of a summary and say, uh, obviously started Sugar Tube like 24 weeks ago. And um, got to say, uh, I've been really touched by all the pleasant emails and comments that I get off you guys. I'm really sorry that I haven't replied to a lot of them, um, but I do read them all. And it's really nice to hear your stories about, you know, why you've uh, into engineering or um, what, what stories you've got with your imps and stuff. It's been brilliant. And uh, some of the, the feedback I've had on the YouTube as well have been great. And it's really inspired me to do more. And, I, and I've realized, I was saying to the wife, you know, I actually enjoy working more now because, you know, making the videos and sharing what we do, it's um, it's good, I, I enjoy it. I think it's, uh, and it's been good for business as well, you know. I've had loads of new jobs come in, so it'll be busy next year. But um, we'll, we'll get through it all, hopefully. Anyway, I'll stop waffling now. Hope you enjoy the episode, and I will look forward to seeing you all um, next Sunday at 7. Good morning, YouTubers. Today we're going to have a little chat about crankshafts in Hillman Imp engines. Now, what you'll see we've got in front of us here is I've got a clock gauge on a crankshaft, and there's no centre bearing in it, so it's only supported here and here. And the reason I've done that is I want to check if the crank is straight. Now this is the crankshaft that's been away to uh, the grinders and had the journals shrunk to 36 mil so we can run the motorbike piston and rod. If you've been watching the other videos, you'll have seen what I've been up to. But it's very common amongst imp cranks for them to have a little bit of a bend in them. Um, now, back in the day, obviously, all the cranks used to get bent because they used to go for tough riding. And when they got the process of tough riding, the heat used to put a bend in them. So if you ever take a, an old school racing engine apart, you'll find that the, the main bearings have been ground generally to 10 thou, so that it, it gets the crankshaft perfectly straight. Now, I've not, I've not, this hasn't been tough riding. Uh, this has just had a bit of um, a hard time where it's been machined. So, and obviously it's settled over the years. So we can see we've probably got roughly about seven hour bend in that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go for the process of straightening it with you and how we can get away with doing it this way because these aren't cast crankshafts uh, i've got another one here which is a demonstration these are a forging and they're made out of en8 and it's quite a nice sort of uh, elastic material it's not like a cast crank you couldn't get a cast crank and put it in the press like we're going to do and expect it to um, to bend straight again because it would just break because it, it obviously cast doesn't like flexing. Um, now the imp crank is absolutely superb, a standard as I always bang on about. You know it is a fantastic crank. So we'll talk about why it's a fantastic crank. So it's made out of a, a fairly good spec material which is EN8. And if we look here, now if this was a cast crankshaft, we wouldn't have this forging line. And what that forging line is. If you can imagine in the factory, they would have got like this big like slug of EN8 steel and it'd be glowing bright red and it would have gone in the forging and, and the forging is basically the shape of that crankshaft but it'd be just rough as anything, you know? And they'd just stamp it out with, that, you know, hundreds of tons of pressure and keep thumping it until it forms a shape. But obviously the, the, the two dies and it comes to within a certain distance of each other to allow for all of the extra material to spread out. So we end up with these big fat lines where the excess material has been ground off. So looking at the crankshaft, what we can say about it is if we, if we could see inside it, we obviously we've seen a broken one. I could get a broken one actually in the next video and show you, but the material strength, well, when, when we're going with this, right, what I'm gonna say is because we have something called grain flow and structure throughout the crankshaft. So if you've got a cast crank, it's like a, it's just, it's just cast and it's got that material strength, but because it's been stamped out and the material's been compressed with that massive weight thumping it, 
you, you compress the material that's why they ring like a bell when you hit them you know if we I mean this is sat on a plastic uh, thing but I'll try and give you a demonstration with me holding it but it, it make they make a lovely ring because the materials really compressed so the grain flow is all nice and flowing in the shape of the crankshaft so obviously it's 50 years old so we don't mind it being out, out, out of plonk they are generally out of plonk straight out of the factory as well I've got another crank here uh, it might seem weird but I put them on the heater just to get them warm because it just feels wrong um, trying to bend them straight again when they're stone cold so we'll get it a little bit warmer than that and then we'll put it in the press but I'll show you a standard one that's come out of a, an imp which was absolute low mileage engine the, the bearings are all on top tolerance and we're just going to tweak it straight so yeah it's a steel forging they're made out of en8 which isn't a fantastic material but you know back in the day that was a, a good strong material certainly strong enough for the um the purpose of being a hillman imp crankshaft in a road car and obviously because we use them in the races they were over specs because they, they work in the races no problem now when we put a steel crank in an imp we put an e and, e and we get them remanufactured they're made out of something called en40b which is a special um high carbon steel that's really you know really strong but that will won't have been a forging it will have been a billet and it's machined all over so if you had that i mean in my opinion the, the best crankshaft to have would be a steel forging that was en40 because then we'd have the flow and the grain and everything and the material strength and we'd have a really strong crank then whereas you know obviously the fact that the um, the new crankshafts are made out of em40 makes them stronger because the material strength is stronger but they aren't a forging so they haven't got the same grain flow but they are still stronger because the material specs higher right i can see me losing my path now so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put this in the press and i might get a crank a crankshaft that i've got which i want to show you actually and then you can see where i'm coming from all right i've just slipped a standard crankshaft out of a standard 875 hillman imp it's been running lovely there's no um you can't feel anywhere i've mic'd it up all over it's absolutely bang on there's no wear in it and it's been running really happy but what's quite alarming is if we turn it round, you'll see it's got just over eight hour bend so zoom in there which is like oh my word how's that happened well it's probably just because the crank settled but we'll 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 get that out of it before we put the um three inch seal on it a uh, diameter and then take it for balancing so moving on there's some more crankshafts here i was going to talk about this one is a back in the day crankshaft an en40b see it's got now this is my favorite type of crank now i think this will be the strongest crank we could ever come across really because obviously it's um it's made out of a, a higher spec material and you can see it's a forging so we'll give that the ring test as well in a minute when i get the camera on the stand so this is a good crank this is how they used to do it this is probably something to do with ian carter i'd imagine it's a big heavy thing but that should be a really good strong crank and what was quite interesting was the nose is about a quarter of an inch bigger diameter and i think they've done that because when they got these things made um extra you know after aftermarket or whatever you want to call it I think what they thought was what we'll do is we'll get a bigger nose made on it so we can drive off this end because a lot of the hydroplanes and the motorbikes that were the sidecar outfits they all drove off the nose of the crankshaft rather than the flywheel end just to do with the way that their gearboxes were set up or if they're on a prop shaft through the boat so yeah i think that this this could be a good crankshaft to, um, for something that wants to run to a really high speed uh, now i don't like <laughs> It is, it is brand new, but I don't like how sharp some of the edges are. It wants a bit of a fettle. And the reason I say that is I've got another crankshaft here, which is broken. Obviously, it's another forging. Um, now, this has been cross-drilled, this crankshaft. And I do wonder, let's just zoom in a little bit, if you can see as well, where the point of fracture started from. So we can see that it's really sort of shiny around here so did it start because the hole had you know was there a problem with the way the hole started there you can just see a little nick on the edge of the hole i did wonder where the the crack had propagated from but anyway 
we'll never know but that that was a bad failure i believe that belonged to mr adrian oliver he left it with me a long time ago anyway for me to look at so the last crankshaft we wanted to look at i wanted us to look at together was this is uh one of the new cranks that i fit um, made by Farnden engineering it's a lovely steel crankshaft it's made out of en40b so it's a, it's a higher spec material, but it is a for, it's not a forging. It's been made from a billet and just machined all over. So it won't have the same nice grain flow, but because it's a higher material spec, they're really, really, really strong. Um, I put all these, at, this is actually a standard stroke one that's going in one of the um, 1040cc race engines. But normally I have these done as a 69.5 which gives us 1150 on a 72 and a half mil bore or 1200 cc on a 74 mil bore so yeah that's a nice nice crankshaft we'll put that in as well and we'll have a check and see if that's straight just out for just out of interest it should be absolutely bob on but these things do settle it wouldn't surprise me as a thou in it okay first one on test is the em40b forging from back in the day with the big nose on it so that's this one it's also a cross drill so we'll just, just check there's maybe half a foul in it i'm not even going to sweat about that i can cope with that so next one up we'll try is the uh, the new steel one from far okay i've got the steel one in now and this one appears to be absolutely bob on so that, a bit of that jerkiness is just me but i'll try and turn it smoothly it's very hard <laughs> with one hand maybe half a foul in it but i doubt it uh, it's more than likely my uh, my clock gauge moving around on the on the base with me moving the crank jerkily right so that concludes my little chat about the three different crankshafts we'll get on with straightening them now and see if we can get them bob on before we machine them and take them for balancing right okay we're going to do a little ring test now i've just done this and i was quite shocked by the uh, response first of all we'll start with the uh hillman imp standard crankshaft that's just come out of the high mileage at low mileage hillman imp engine and if i hit it you'll notice it rings for nearly five six seconds lovely ring to it now the um the new crankshaft the brand new one from farnden if i hit that it's still got a nice ring but it does end a lot quicker now um i suppose you're expecting me to tell you the reason why that is but i don't actually know um all i can think is it's to do with the process in which it's you know stamped out this is obviously a lot more sort of than this one although that's just obviously a stronger material but uh, yeah interesting right doing a bit of an extension to the um crankshaft chat and the different materials etc etc and the ring test now I was talking to my pal who's a lot cleverer than me and he's basically said the ring test only really works when the crankshaft is completely bare because all these little bits on the crank that are attached to it will absorb so these two gears that are pressed on the end even though they feel tight they'll like absorb the uh, the ring as, as you ring it so that's why we're getting different noises now early in the video i was talking about the different materials so obviously that was going to be in en 40b one which is a forging so that's my strongest one you can see the big thick casting line there or not casting line forging line where it's been stamped out and then we've got the one that's been made out of a billet that's the em40b billet so that was a big slug of uh, steel that was obviously stamped out as a slug and then it's been machined and then um what i've got here now is a ford cvh crankshaft and the reason I've done that is I just wanted to talk about how a cast crank looks. So if we just zoom in there, you'll see the casting line where the two dies come together is really thin because obviously what happens is the, um, the material is poured in hot and then it cools down and uh, there's no stamping involved. So if this was to break this crankshaft, you'd get like um, a, a cast is a funny material it's like a crystalline sort of structure rather than like um, the, the smooth we saw on the broken steel crankshaft earlier so different type of material completely but obviously a lot of crankshafts are cast and uh, and they work well but a forging is always better and then 
this is a crankshaft that you know the, the piston and rod that I've been proposing to use in this new engine with the why we shrunk the big at the big end journals down this is the motorbike crankshaft which uh, belongs to them pistons and rods and uh, this is obviously another forge and you can see a, a forging line there quite a wide one where the the two dies have stamped it out and the excess material is spread out so it's quite a light gray I suspect it's been uh, nitrided and um, it'll be of quite a high spec probably similar spec to the EM40B because this is like spec to run at 14,000 rpm or something as standard so what I'm going to do is that my assistant is just going to hold a, a crankshaft for me just hold that for us please and uh, hover it there we'll have a ring test on this one first it's interesting it's quite quite a num ring on that one it does ring but just hold it there instead yeah that's good yeah so it lasts for about three or four seconds but it's not like i thought it'd be i thought that one would be a really high sort of uh, frequency ring right this one's the en40b uh, billet so let's give that yeah that's got a much higher ring now i'm sure some of the viewers out there will understand this job better than me maybe they can explain why we get like a is it to do with the density of the material that allows the noise to travel through or see that's got a different ring quite a nice ring and that's an iron crank so yeah that's interesting and the final one is the motorbike crankshaft let's have a little listen to this one that's got a ring but it's quite short but obviously because it's got all these clutch type things on it and whatnot it might be that that's causing it to um to sound a little bit different right i think we'll knock it on the head now talking about crankshafts and different materials anyway so i think we covered most bases right i thought we'd start with the worst crank of all before in the press so i put the dti gauge on as you can see and if you watch him go around you'll see as it comes on this as it comes this way around this is our this is our plus so if i lift this plunger up you'll see that's our high side so what we'll do is we'll just stop when we think we're at the highest point which I think is about here now oh we're falling in the hole come on get me some stuff uh, I think it's about there Right, so I'm going to mark that with a bit of emery. Cool. And then we'll go and transfer this to the press. Right, got the crank in the press. That's my little mark there, which is where it's. I know it's high. So I'll put a little bit of aluminium on there. We've got that perhaps. And I'll start bringing the press down. Now, I'm not going to go too crazy with this because I'm only looking for 8 thou. I don't want to bend it in half. I just want it to get, you know, if it's within a thou, I'll be happy. Probably find it'll settle off again. Right. So I'm, I'm watching the deflection here. I haven't actually got a tonnage gauge, but I think that's probably moved about. A good millimeter so I'll leave it on for a second and I'll back it off and we'll go and see what that's like now in the in the in the block where we've got the clock goes on. right I finished chasing the crankshaft backwards and forwards now and got him to within a foul so that's all good now I'm happy for that crankshaft I don't think we'll be using it in a racer but it'll be fine for a roadie um, over here we've got the um, crankshaft one of the two crankshafts that I've had ground to, to run with the 36 mil bearing and what I'm doing is I'm just top turning the, the counterweight if you look I'm just machining this part here to get some weight out of the crank because obviously we don't need as big a counterbalance now because we've got a much smaller uh, connecting rod and piston which is here which only has a total weight of um, 500 grams so I thought we can probably lose a little bit out of the counterbalance and just make the whole assembly lighter and then we're going to go to Bob's now and get them balanced.
Okay, this is the 65 mil stroke crankshaft that I've uh, machined down in the lathe on these this diameter here to reduce the counterweight size. I've just flashed it off with a soft pad just to get all the edges. It's a bit, you know, a bit sharp around here. I've still got the uh, standard throw, the 60.4 mil stroke crank in the lathe. So you can see what I mean. It just just leaves a sharp edge there where obviously the, the tools took all that material off. Now, um, obviously, it's reduced quite a bit off the overall diameter of the, of the crankshaft, so um, the, some of the original balance uh, holes have been uh, significantly reduced in depth. So I'll flash this all off now with the soft pad, and then <laughs> the proof of the pudding will be in the balancing. We'll see if it how it balances up, uh, if, it, if it balances up at all, but we'll find out in the next hour. I've arrived at Mr. Bob Jones's place for the uh, crank balance, and it's got heating on and here's his employee look at you just warming your back you like that don't you wow so what's been going on paul there's bob it's bob in nice mood i brought in some chocolate biscuits to try and do a good job of my crank balance there's first there's one in there for you there's one one for me one for you one for him christmas bonus a biscuit on the heating point yeah well you're not oh mate Right, I can't say anything because he did actually used to sort me out Christmas bonus right, when I worked for him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, what's this over here, Paul? Explain it to me. In fact, what's all this? Well, that looks nice there, doesn't it? What's that? It's very shiny. Uh, BMW. BMW. 2002. Oh, right. Very nice. Very nice. Old M10. And then uh, what's this one? Uh, that's uh, an MG6 head. MG6? What, like a Chinese one? Oh wow, wow. Yeah. Gosh, that looks uh, heavily modified as well. Mm. Very good. Yeah, it's had a lot of work on it. A bit of a row of twin cans, tin cans. What's this lovely piece of cheese on the floor here? Uh, yeah. Whole Bay. It's another old Crossroad, 1600 Crossroad. 1600 Crossroad. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a racing clutch on it. Mm -hmm. What's this one for rebuild or are you just sticking a few bits off it? Possibly, we've borrowed the sump off it as a pattern for something else, so it may or may not get rebuilt. Right. Always boils down to how deep the pockets are, doesn't it? Oh, mate, when I walked in here, you said, are those the crankshafts that have been turned down to take the motorbike piston and rod? Mm -hmm. Does that mean you've been watching Struggle Tube on Sunday night? Uh, no, it was, uh, I saw it posted in a letterbox in Timpley. What? <laughs> <laughs> Amongst other things about you. Right, oh yeah, it was, yeah. All, it was all lies. Come yeah. on, let's look at the crankshaft. Right, where are they? I put... Oh, it's gone dark. So we've got two cranks here. Robert. Let's take one of them to show Bob, see what he thinks. <coughs> what do you think of this, Bob? It's been, it's been machined down to, from 42 to 36. So we can run the motorbike piston and rod. And it's also offset, so it's got a bit of stroke as well. <laughs> Do you think it'll balance up okay? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I've, I've took quite a bit of material off this diameter, you know. Oh, well, it might not be. Oh, right. How will we, what, what, is, what can we do with it if it doesn't balance up properly? Don't worry about that when we see it. Right, okay. Well, I'm, should we do the, uh, the customer job first, then, and we'll, then we'll have the treat at the end? And a chocolate biscuit to celebrate. The machine's just waking up. So has it been asleep? It's been asleep, yeah. Right, well, those good. of you that haven't seen the previous video on the crank balancer, this is Bob's balancer and it, uh, it uses this belt to um, spin the crankshaft up on these rollers and then the machine, really clever, must pick up on the vibration and it turns it into some sort of, uh, like a, almost like a bullseye where you try and remove weight to get the, the dot in the centre of the bullseye. So that's the little, uh, see this little reflective tape goes on here. That tells the um, the machine where the crankshaft is in relation so that it can decide where you drill the holes. The machine's already programmed so it knows the size of the webs and where they are so that it, you can um, drill it. And you know, otherwise you wouldn't know where, it wouldn't know, the machine wouldn't know where it stops. Cause I, was, I was fascinated how, this always knows the exact position of the crank. So obviously these rollers must have um, speed sensors on them or maybe it's on the belt. As soon as you move this, 
you see it on the screen there and then it's got obviously it checks its reference every time around with that so uh get bob's attention in a minute and we'll, we'll get the machine fired up and we'll see how out of balance this is the first crankshaft we're doing which is for a customer who's building an engine for a rally car and he just wants um the crank balancing it's completely standard in every way apart from uh, machine the rear seal down to three inches that's it on the first run with the uh, crankshaft on the balancer this is a standard crankshaft how's it looking robert is it looking like it's going to be uh something like it's not been ground or anything this is as it came from the factory mm, 10 times the tolerance and, and what oh, is it is it a road car no it's going to be a rally car this one 10 times the tolerance and what is that tolerance called? It's G6.3. G6.3. 6.4 times uh, ground millimetres. Right. Launched. We've got a bit of work to do then. Yeah. Right, I'll get Hang back. on, don't wander off, I need your help. Right, so we turn the crankshaft round dead gently, like that. You'll see it knows the crank's moving and it's saying. In that position, on uh, web number two, it wants just under seven mil. It knows the diameter of the drill. So bring the drill down like this. Hold it on. And it's got a little height gauge here, so we just wind that up to 6.7. Just above five uh, And then fire it up. And we just lean on that. And drill the hole all the way down to the stop and then we know that's the amount of material that the computer's asked us to remove you can see that's the little hole there and try it again and see what oh. Knocking that, Bob. Did you pass the gauge it? Will that affect the way it reads it? Oh, is it intolerance? Yeah. Wow. Didn't we do well? Brilliant. Have we got something to uh, put over um, I, Bob, I'm not sure I can afford this to be happening. How much is this going to be costing me, you drilling the hole? A lot. A lot. Oh, traps. It might have gone over budget, this job. We might have to uh, requote the bloke. I didn't intend for you to start using your your time to uh, drill the hole for me, Bob. But thanks anyway. I think it's going to be bullseye first time because you're doing it, not me. Are we in? Oh, look at that. Very impressive, Bob. Right, just the clutch cover to go now. It, it, it looks very smooth and it feels very smooth. The question is... Do you want some more, Bob? 350 milligrams. Milligrams. It's in. Excellent. Brilliant. Right, we can get on with the fun ones now. This is the exciting bit I've been waiting to see. It looks nice and straight after I've straightened it anyway. How's it looking on here, Bob? Is it looking good? I haven't decided yet. Is it going to be able to be dealt with? I really hope so. I want to build this over Christmas. Oh, it's one end in already? Nearly. Nearly. Wow. I thought it'd be absolute country mile out. Right, I've had 20 mil out of this web, deep, at 8 mil diameter. And is it is it closer, Bob? Yeah, it's in. It's in. Can we get it more in, or is that just magnified? Well, it's magnified, isn't it? Right. Look at the size of the green. Oh, no, it's out now. Oh, right. It's spoke too soon. Right, let's do a bit more. Right, I'm on the second crank now. This is the one that's standard throw on the brand new crank that was rusty. And... Uh, How's it looking, Robert? 
I think you can see. Mm. Still out, isn't it? Very much so. And bigger holes. Is it your home time yet? Yeah. Crikey. You don't have an overtime rate, do you? It's horrendous, mate. I can imagine. Crikey. You better hurry up. Get it right. <laughs> I reckon this is the final run for this one, Bob. There you go, it's in. Excellent. Right, thank you very much. That's brilliant. I'm gonna build this over Christmas now. Right, it's treat time for Andy. It's Christmas Eve, and I'm having an afternoon building my uh, engine. This is gonna be the 1120 with the motorbike piston and rod and the small journal. So and what I'm gonna try and do today is get a bit of a dry build out of it, because what I'd like to do is I'd like to have a look at these pistons and rods and see where the valves land when we do a dry build with this cylinder head. This is the head that I did the downdraft ports on many, many years ago when I was really keen. And um, yeah, to be honest, it never really worked uh, or did what I wanted it to do, but I'm keen to use it again. I didn't want to use, <laughs> it sounds crazy, a really good full race head on this bottom end because if the crankshaft snaps, and the piston gets out of control, there's a good chance it'll give the head a good whack and then the head will be scrap. And I don't really want to do that. Whereas that thing is like, it's, it's non-saleable, it has no value and it's um, just an Andy toy. So what we do, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go through the crank now. We've got come back from Bob the Balancers and uh, everything's good. I just sort of put the clock gauge on, make sure nothing's happened with, to it while it's been balanced and had all the machining work done and it stayed straight because it was initially like uh, eighth hour or ninth hour out. So I just gently pressed it in the press to get it straight as you saw the video with me doing the other one. So dead happy with that now. It's all nice and straight. It's all flattened off. It's been balanced. I've polished it. We're ready to assemble. So we'll do a dry build, should I say. So at the moment you can see there's no middle main bearing in, that's how this system works. I've just um, opened these holes up a little bit, just deburred it all so that the oil can get round nicely. And I've, I've done something similar with the um, one big end there, just because obviously we've shrunk the diameter of the um, journal, we've changed where the hole came out because it comes out at an angle, obviously as it gets smaller, the hole has moved over to the side. So we just tried to bring them back in line with the center of the journal so that it can oil the, the, uh, the bearing uniformly. So we've got to do piston guided rods. So I'm gonna to have to make some spaces to go behind here so we can control the rod position because obviously it's too narrow for the width of the journal. And, uh, but before we tackle any of that, let's get a bit of a dry build on. I'm gonna check the mains tolerance on it first. We might do a little bit on that. Get the crank to go around nicely. When everything's going around nice, we'll put the pistons and rods on mark out where the valves want to go and see how much lift clearance we've got at TDC and then we'll machine the pistons and hopefully get the bottom end together and then the rest of it should actually go together quite quickly because the head already exists it's already got cam and followers etc so uh, looking forward to getting stuck into it right you might remember a few weeks ago i had william in the workshop uh, building his little 930 up for his uh, future brother-in-law and um, he's finished it and brought it back and uh, it's, it's really good. It's a lovely little friendly thing. It's got a little, um, is it what, what manifold's that? Uh, Derrington on A that. Derrington yeah. log type manifold with one of his special four into two into one equal length. It's a 930 with 11 to one, is it compression? Yeah, somewhere around there. And it's got a special cam that you won't tell me what it is. It's like, um, special. you just said it's special. But it's- um, I don't know what it is. <laughs> all right. It's a secret <laughs> cam. It's a secret cam. So it's, we just think we might have seen, well, we saw 72 horsepower, but we'll, we'll take out the uh, the, the uh, inaccuracy factor and call it a good 65 horsepower. Yeah, yeah. So I'll load him up. See, lovely torque there at 3,500 RPM. Zoom in if you want. I'll back it off. Still holding 60, 68, 74. Five still there, five thousand. Falling off now. Kaboom! We're going to ten, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it won't go past seven. There's some standard bolts in it. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, I think you've done a great job there, mate. And um, I wanted to say to you, you've got the job. So let me know when you're moving to Manchester, because I could do with some help. Oh, cheers, mate. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, we're still on the dyno with Will's engine, but Will had a bit of spare time, so we've been doing a bit of back to back in, just checking things out. And he's decided to try a pair of inch and a quarter Strombergs, a standard in sports setup on this uh, engine, even with the air filter. And um, yeah, it's not as powerful. We've just um, got it's very flat, we're starting there with about 63 foot pound, just backing it off. Still 65. 4 5, still 65. Good falling off now. So it's doing, yeah. I saw it fall right off once we got to 6 5 there, but interesting just uh, doing the back to back. So it looks like your, um, your downdraft car works better, Will. And we have tried several things. We've gone richer, weaker, air filter, no air filter elbows no elbows and uh, nothing's making a difference i think you're better off putting it back as it was pal yeah i think that's what i'll go for excellent okay a bit of an update on andy's treat day this is the uh 1120 so it's 65 mil stroke um with a 74 mil piston and uh yeah looks like it's going to be a goer obviously we're going to have to come in now with the valves and make some marks where they land and that'll be our reference point to do some valve cutouts now Normally, I absolutely shy away from modifying a piston from a standard, especially with a valve cutout, because it weakens it. But um, on this instance, I'm sort of going to turn a blind eye to what I'm up to and just do it because there's no other way of making it work. And uh, we're this way down, you know, this far down the road now. We've got to see it through. So I've uh, been using my bar to do the mains. Got them all, all, all nice now. Checked all the tolerance. It's always worth checking the tolerance on the mains. When you're dealing with a, a b1 block you know for some reason they're not as good as the um, original limp so we've also as you can see we've got a lot of end float because down here the um the we're going to use this as a what we call a piston guided rod so you see that play either side there what i'll do is i'll work out where the center is on the on the bearing and then I'll measure it and I'll put a washer either side the correct thickness so that as the engine goes round the rod is guided by the piston and it stays central but yeah I'm really pleased with that it actually turns really nicely as well which is good so looking forward to the next stage and hopefully over Christmas we'll get a tune out of this and we'll get a video for you on the dyno